Welcome to day four of DLS Multispecies Focus Week. It is often recommended to graze your multi-species swords to between four and six centimeters and maybe extend the rotation slightly to allow for the herbs in the mixture to recover from grazing. Disrupting the rotation like this can be off-putting to some. Today we're going to see how Kevin and Carl are managing the multi-species swords in their rotations. All this week we're giving you the chance to win five acres of seed for yourself and a friend. Just follow the posts on our social media to see the details on how to enter. For summaries and fact sheets on all the information covered each day, follow the link to our website. Don't forget, you can contact us directly with any questions that you might have throughout the week. So Carl, how did you go about managing the swords in your rotation? It has fitted into the rotation very well. I, I thought it would actually have to take a longer rotation, but it's actually fitted in about maybe 22, 23 days. Now for the second grazing, I had taken a measurement and I weighed it and I estimated that there was a cover of I think 1750 on that. But subsequently, I actually sent away a sample and the dry matter was a little bit lower than what I expected would be in normal ryegrass. So it came back in that the cover was probably closer to 1400 but again on the second graze out it was a complete clean and got a third graze then about the 15th of October just before uh, the, the winter set in. Did you find that the cows had to take time to adapt to the new swords? The, the first day the, the cows came in here the first morning I actually stood for a while watching them. Now they were eating away but I was watching a few cows were wondering I'd say how I described it as what was going into their mouth so they were taking a bite their head was rising a little bit and you could see them working their tongue wondering what was actually after coming in. But by that evening they had absolutely grazed the whole paddock out completely so they took it very very quickly is what I would say. So we often get questions on bloat and multi-species swords. Did you have any fears or any experience of, of this yourself? I've never had an issue on the farm with bloat thankfully enough. Um, I'd be saying if I did have an issue I probably would look at some solution like probably bloat oil or something to add that to the water but thankfully so far I haven't had any issue with bloat. No. What I would say, what I do practice here, even during the summer, is I don't actually give the cows, say, 36 hour grazings. It's all 12 hour grazing. So that probably happen, or helps from the point of view of bloat, so they, they can't be so selective and just eat clover like. We often get asked, can you make silage from multi species swords? The short answer is yes. In studies that I carried out with Chagas as part of my PhD, we found that multi species swords could ensoil equally as well as grass swords. The biggest obstacle to ensoiling multi species sword is water, with mixtures having a much lower dry matter content than a grass only sword and this can often lead to poor preservation. It is important that when we're making silage from multi-species mixtures that we're cutting a dry crop and we're also giving it enough time to wilt. In terms of management then, um, how do you manage multi-species in the rotation compared to other pa uh, paddocks? Still coming in every 21 days with the rest of the paddocks. It's still the same grazing, no fertiliser. The paddocks next door have all got fertiliser on the 21 day rotation. Uh, I haven't changed management. It's, it's a bit easier to manage if anything because you're not, you're not going in with your fertiliser spreader. Did the cows take time to adapt to the multi-species swords and did you have any concerns about bloat, for example? Uh, no, they kind of came straight in. Uh, they were looked when they came in first, obviously. Um, it looks different to the paddocks next door. And, uh, but the heads were down, there was no selective grazing. They all grazed. Um, there was, they cleaned out the same as what they would grass paddock. Uh, on the blow end, we have a lot of clover in paddocks already. So clover, or sorry, uh, bloat is not really a worry. Um, we, they're, they're used to having clover, so we, we don't really get bloat. Hi, I'm Alistair Mulhead, Product Development Manager for Agricom, part of the DLF Group in New Zealand. Uh, just talking about chicory today, and uh, it's a very, very popular crop in New Zealand, both for dairy cows in summertime and summer dry environments, where they're chasing the protein that comes from such a such a green crop in summertime, uh, and lamb finishing, where it's a highly successful crop for summer lamb finishing as well. The key to chicory is it's got a very deep tap root and it's a very high, a low dry matter plant with low fibre, high energy, and it's got good micronutrients, particularly copper. All of these things add up to being a plant that excels in its growth in summertime and also benefits a lot of animal systems where you're trying to push on animal performance through summer and early autumn. Getting it established, we're aiming to sow it at between eight to 10 k's a hectare. And this is mainly because in a cropping based system, we're aiming for fast growth early first grazing so we can get it into a regrowth system. It's very sensitive to temperature and it does need to be sown on an increasing soil temperature, aiming to sow at about one centimetre per hectare, uh, one centimetre in uh, depth and looking to graze when there's about eight true leaves. Uh, chicory is a highly responsive crop to nutrient and works best on free draining high fertility soils. Uh, the success in New Zealand, I think, has come from the fact that it's highly palatable. Once established, it recovers very fast and it can get into a regrowth cycle very quickly. It can be set stocked, 
but ideally we grow the most in the calendar year by rotational grazing. It is, needs to be left in winter, it doesn't like to be grazed during particularly wet conditions and in the following spring going into a second year it will go to seed and seed head management is a big part of managing chicory. However it is a highly successful crop and one that uh, does a wonderful job for meat production per hectare or um, stimulating milk production in summer. Persistence of the herb portion of a multi-species sward is often highlighted as a concern and I think that anyone considering uh, a multi-species sward should be aware that you prob you'll probably have to uh, carry out some sort of sward rejuvenation to boost the content of chicory and plantain for example in the sward over a period of three or four or five years. This shouldn't be seen as a barrier to using multi-species swords as the savings accumulated over the three or four year pe productive period of the sward should far outweigh the cost of over sowing uh, periodically. So the lads have found that the multi-species swords have fitted in pretty well with their grazing platform, being able to keep up with the 21 day rotation. It'll be interesting to see how this management affects the diversity of the sward in the coming years, as this type of management could affect the persistence of chicory and plantain. Join us tomorrow where we'll see the benefits that Carol and Kevin are getting from their multi-species swords. All this week we're giving you the chance to win 5 acres of seed for yourself and a friend. Just follow the posts on our social media to see the details on how to enter. For summaries and fact sheets on all the information covered each day, follow the link to our website. Don't forget you can contact us directly with any questions that you might have throughout the week.